What if I tell you there's a way to force a large grid projector to show small grid? Wait, what? Here is how. Welcome engineers to another video. We all know small grid projectors do small grid projections, large grid projectors do large grid projections and projection tables do something for decoration but can't uh, really line up and be used for 3D printing. Well, that's not all of the truth. So here we are now with our test grid. Um, just to show physically what I'm talking about once more. Um, you do small and a large grid. and save them as blueprints. like this. So we all know if I use the projector to show the large grid, this is a large grid projector, um, Should work, yeah. So now you can line up and do some things with it. But if I try to use the small grid, this error will appear. Incorrect grid size, blueprint size must match that of the projector. Okay, but if you connect your small grid to a large grid like this, using a large grid rotor with a small grid head, head, rotor head, and put your small grid on it. We can do this. So what happened now, in most cases there uh, appears a, a warning that says um, multiple grids detected. The, 
projector will choose the largest grid. So since this grid is made of one large grid block and a higher number of small grid blocks, it chooses the small grid. So in this way you can force it to project a small grid. Didn't try it yet, but I think uh, it will work the other way around too. The most important thing to get this to work is if you want to um, project small grid with a large grid projector, you need to drag your blueprint for it from the large grid. And the other way around, if you want to project large grid with a small grid projector, you need to drag it from the small grid. So now you may ask, but does it line up so I can weld it? Well, I tried a lot with um, adjusting the rotor head and um, the answer is no. Um, but that's not the end of the story because you can use it a more unusual way. So now the question is, uh, what can we use it for? Um, to show an example, I took my um, Argo mobile build, uh, which is known as uh, a multi-grid monster. And yeah, at least you can put, now you can put all subgrids into one blueprint. You can project or partly build and then project the rest in uh, survival. So, to show this, this is the primary hull, the inside of the Argo mole. And all the red projectors you see now are containing one of the countless uh, subgrids it is made of. To show that, So for showing it, uh, I didn't include everything now, just one side. And the thing is now, yes, you can't weld it like this because they doesn't, um, they don't line up perfectly, but we can do this. Um, we give the rotor adaptions their small heads like this and over there and Oh, one is missing. Let's take this one. And now you can take it as a blueprint and replicate it by hand.
like this. So yes, it's a lot of work and it needs patience. But this is a functioning way to get this ship or others replicated in survival. There's still another problem with this method. Um, as you may imagine, you won't get uh, any scripts or block groups, uh, for example, lights or something um, that came with the original blueprint. So you have to redo this work by hand. 